Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about a common exam question which relates to the identification of unknowns. Now this particular video refers to the requirements for level 3. I will do a similar one for level 2 which will talk about how to identify the unknowns that are required for level 2. Okay so the first thing, the general types of questions, um, they come in several different categories, I suppose. It could be about developing a method to identify the unknowns. It could be about identifying an unknown molecule or functional group from test results. And I've actually got a separate video discussing that, which will be up shortly. And or it could be about distinguishing between pairs of compounds. Now, to answer any of these exam questions, the first thing you need to be familiar with is how to or what are the common observations, colour changes, etc. that you might expect to see with different reactions. You need to have a basic understanding of the solubility of different organic molecules and you need to understand the key reactions of different molecules and different functional groups. Okay, so let's have a look. The most important one, you're almost always given water and even if you're not given water, most of the reagents that you have are aqueous solutions, which means they have water. So you can always talk about solubility. Anything that is short chain, less than five carbons, if it's an alcohol, an amine, a carboxylic acid or an amide, it will be soluble in water. Most of the other functional groups, alkanes, alkenes, haloalkanes, um, acyl, no, not acyl chlorides, um, esters, they are insoluble in water and most of them will float. The exception is haloalkanes, which are more dense in water, so they will sink to the bottom. Acyl chlorides will react violently with water, producing HCl gas, and not just pure water. If you add it to a solution of bromine water or Toland's reagent, which is an aqueous solution, or, um, you know, potassium permanganate, which is an aqueous solution, or any aqueous solution, acyl chlorides will react violently. That is one place where a lot of people stuff up in their exams with these sorts of questions. They're like, oh, well, I'll add water, or I'll add all the samples to potassium permanganate, and the one that doesn't, the one that goes from purple to colourless is whatever it is, and the others won't react. But of course, acyl chlorides will react. They just won't make the colour change. They'll instead produce violent clouds of gas. Okay, so acyl chlorides react with water, every aqueous solution. Okay, litmus paper is really good for identifying carboxylic acids and amines. Um, so amines, of course, are bases, so you add red, red litmus paper, it turns blue in the presence of an amine. Carboxylic acids, of course, are acids, so blue litmus paper turns red. And any reaction that produces HCl gas that HCl gas can be tested for, again, using a red litmus paper, blue litmus paper, I should say. So that's worth being aware of as well. Metals and carbonates are used usually to test for the presence of an acid. Um, acid plus metal makes salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Sorry, acid plus a carbonate makes salt plus metal plus carbon dioxide. Acid plus metal makes salt plus hydrogen. Hydrogen you can then identify with the POP test and carbon dioxide turns lime water milky. So those ones are, are also worth being aware of. Bromine water is usually used to test for the presence of an alkene or any other unsaturated bond such as an alkyne. And the bromine water goes from orange to colourless. Any alkyl chain will react with bromine water in the presence of UV light but very slowly. But it's not distinctive for an alkane okay because anything with a long carbon chain anything with a carbon chain from an alcohol to a halo alkane to whatever else will react slightly with bromine water okay permanganate in acidic conditions it oxidizes primary alcohols and secondary alcohols and actually to be honest aldehydes and ketones as well goes from purple to colorless so your primary alcohol forms a carboxylic acid, your secondary alcohol forms a ketone, um, your aldehyde and your, your aldehyde 
forms of carboxylic acid as well. If you have neutral conditions, your permanganate will react with an alkene, forming a brown precipitate and a diol. So permanganate is not great for distinguishing between an alcohol and an alkene because it reacts with both of them. Now, permanganate will also react with an alkene in acidic conditions. It just doesn't form a diol. Potassium dichromate, which does require heating, and it requires acid, so it must be acidified. Okay, quite often these questions ask about conditions. The orange dichromate will turn green, and primary alcohols react from carboxylic acids, secondary alcohols react from ketones, and aldehydes also react from carboxylic acids. This one doesn't react with an alkene, so it's more useful in that respect. Okay, now there are lots and lots of examples of these questions. You can find one in virtually every exam paper, perhaps not 2017, but every other one that I know of. Um, and they do come in a variety of formats. What I'm going to show you is 2019's exam paper or exam question, and I'm going to look a little bit about how we would go about answering this. So, oh. Yeah, for, sorry, final test. Tolerance and failings, both are used to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So aldehydes react in oxidation reactions, forming carboxylic acids, while ketones don't react. And the tolerance reagent will form a silver mirror. And the failings, all benedicts, either will do, turns from blue to a brick red precipitate is usually the standard answer. Does in practice, as you will know if you've seen this experiment, go a range of different colours, ranging from red to yellow to green. But the textbook answer is that it forms a brick red precipitate, which is Cu2O, cuprous oxide. Um, anyway, so let's have a look at the 2019 exam question and see how we go about it. This one is pretty standard. Describe and explain a chemical test to distinguish the following pairs of molecules. Now, there are four bullet points there. So your answer should include the reagents and conditions required, observations, type of reaction, and the structural formula of any organic products. That means you don't need all the byproducts, you don't need the H2O or the HCl or anything else that's formed, but any organic product that's formed. Okay, so the first pair, propan 1-ol and propane. Now, you could do several different things with this. The easiest one would probably be to use bromine water. Um, which the propane would react with quickly. And it would react very quickly. You would get a colour change of orange to colourless. And the, with the alkene, obviously. This would be an addition reaction. And... The structural formula of any products, I'm just drawing that right now, and I will show you what that might look like. There are no conditions required for this one. The reaction would be quite fast. The only thing you would have to do is make sure it's well mixed, and of course, the fact that propane is a gas is slightly challenging. But nevertheless, here is probably the easiest option. So... Propane plus bromine water makes 1,2-dibromopropane. So that's the structure of it. You can write it as an equation. It's nice and neat. Um, and you've got the alkene reacts in an addition reaction, orange to colourless, and the alcohol does not react. Now, if you didn't want to use that, um, use the bromine water. You could also use potassium dichromate with the aldehyde, ah, with the alcohol oxidized to a carboxylic acid. That, of course, dichromate, you need to acidify it, you need to heat it, so those are the conditions. 
your color changes orange to green and that's an oxidation reaction okay butanol and butanol is the second question now the obvious ones with this would be to pick something like permanganate or dichromate but of course that's going to react with both reagents so i would choose the aldehyde and a reagent like toland's reagent or failing's reagent or benedict's obviously one of those and with that what you're going to get is an oxidation reaction and it's going to form the carboxylic acid butanoic acid just as an aside never make butanoic acid in the laboratory it smells like stale vomit and old cheese combined it's really very unpleasant and i've not yet come across any student who is particularly excited about it I certainly never come across any teacher that's particularly excited about it so Toland's reagent color change is you've gone from colorless to forming a silver mirror um, you would need to heat it Failing's reagent or Tol or Benedict's reagent you've gone from blue to brick red again heating would be required um, and the product it doesn't really matter again which reagent you've used because you're going to get the same product in either case. I've put down Toland's, but you could just as easily do Phalen's. So Toland's reagent, you're going to see a silver mirror formed when the aldehyde reacts, but you wouldn't see one with the alcohol because Toland's reagent is not a strong enough oxidizing agent to oxidize an alcohol. It is an oxidation reaction. Please, whatever you do, with these sorts of questions, you can see how there are three bullet points, four bullet points there. Please make sure you address those four bullet points for every single question. Right, final one. Ethanol chloride and ethyl pentanoate. So, first thing to ask yourself, what functional groups do I have? I have an acyl chloride and an ester. The easy reagent is water. As soon as you see an acyl chloride, water is always going to be your easiest option for identifying it because acyl chlorides react violently with water. What will happen to the ester? Well, esters are insoluble in water, so the ester will float on top of the water. The ethanol chloride will react violently with the water producing steaming, cloudy fumes, call it what you will. And what you will see is the formation of a carboxylic acid, structure provided, and this as you see here, is a substitution reaction where the Cl has been substituted for an OH. You don't have to write the whole reaction, you can just write the formula of the product, but you must include it because that's what the question asks for. Always answer the question that has been asked. And that's how you would go about answering a question like this. These are very, very common questions that you will see in pretty much every year exam. They might vary a little bit in structure, but they're not going to change significantly in terms of what the examiners are expecting. All right, I hope you found this useful. Please do tune in for my next one where I look at some different types of unknown questions. Thanks, bye.